Fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and less meat. Yeah, person. that's what I feel yeah. like here in Africa. You don't really crave the pork and the red meat no. and the chicken because, firstly, it's so hot. And if you're gonna, you don't want your body to just feel so lazy and sluggish eating all that meat and then walking out in this temperature. Right. The other thing, being here and being on the road is a challenge because, y'all. <laughs> These people don't know how to drive out here. Oh, like, oh, didn't you say you got hit by a car? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Weird. Like, y'all know people say that these people ain't got no food over here. <laughs> but. What? <laughs> Please. It's food growing everywhere. <laughs> like, everywhere. They, they got y'all. All y'all that was sending that money to them people with that little boy with the flies on him, they got oh, y'all. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> it's still some people that falls for that narrative and thinks. That, that video that they consistently used to show us in America with the boy that's starving <laughs> with the flies pitching on him. Firstly, it's flies everywhere here because... guys welcome back to my channel my name is Lala and today I'm here with a tour and his wife I'm Isha G Isha G and our tour and they told me they moved to Tanzania about a, a year ago and I want you guys to tell me what has your experience been here so far been like here you want me to go first sure <laughs> well Hello family, how y'all doing all around the world? Thank you first of all, first of all, Lala for having us on your channel. Thank you. Um, yes, we moved here about a year ago and it has just been amazing. Uh, we've had ups and downs just like anybody that transitions to another country, especially when you've never been to another country. <laughs> you know, continent. Right, a whole other <laughs> continent. You know, this is our first time ever leaving America so uh, we had to get used to the language barrier mm -hmm. the cultural differences uh, the customs mm -hmm. um, one of the best parts that we got used to was how good the food is here. <laughs> exactly. but you do have to get used to the food in two ways here. yes <laughs> how yes. how so how would you say uh, when you first get here even though the food is so fresh Mm -hmm. Because of us coming from the West, we're not used to eating food like that. Our bodies yeah, don't the, know what the to rich do with food. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So a lot of times for people when they get here, you have what you call traveler stomach. Mm -hmm. mm. And like the food just ain't, it ain't staying in. Yeah. <laughs> we can say that on your channel, right? Yes, that's okay. fine. That's fine. You can be yourself. Just be yourself. So yeah, I was just rolling on the way to you guys. I seen like fruit stands mm -hmm. and vegetable in it. The food looks so rich. But when I was living in New York, the fruits will spoil within a day. They don't look as full as filling no. and rich. It's just richness and abundance everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. Yes. So what is some of the changes you made in your diet since you've been here? Uh, so for years in the U.S., I wanted to be pescatarian, and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I like meat. I'm sorry. So my husband, <laughs> yes, he loves meat. So it was very difficult. You well, know, we have to say loved. Yes, now. past tense. It was very difficult for me to always cook two meals, but I don't know what happened. Coming over here, it was an easy transition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, from all the meat to basically, I'm pescatarian mm -hmm. fully, and my husband, he seldomly eats meat now. Mm -hmm. So, Mainly yeah, chicken. really? Mainly Why chicken. is that? Is because you just. It's healthier, honestly, it, it's healthier. Um, uh, my wife, she's been on me for years about I need to eat better, mm -hmm. um, to you know live longer. You know, mm -hmm. um, as we know, as black people, mm -hmm. we look. Let's just be honest, y'all. We ate everything. We ate pork ribs, yeah. beef, all that yeah. stuff, which clogs up the arteries. Really, not that good for you. Yeah. And coming from the West, we had a lot of GMO foods. Mm -hmm. But here in Africa, the you know we eat things that are healthier for you because the food is fresh mm -hmm. you know um so 
for me personally, it just became a, a health issue where it was better for me to eat more fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and less meat. I'm yeah, that's said. what I feel yeah. like here in Africa. You don't really crave the pork and the red no. meat and the chicken because firstly, it's so hot. And if you're gonna, you don't want your body to just feel so lazy and sluggish eating all that meat and then walking out in this temperature, right. you know? So your body doesn't even crave it. It's like when I work out, after I work out, my body doesn't crave junk. It craves like real fruits, uh -huh. veggies, things that are gonna fuel yeah. my body. Right. Yeah. Yes. So I really haven't been eating as much meat as well either, you know? But what are the challenges y'all have faced since you've been here? Oh, <laughs> goodness. Challenges. Well, like he said earlier, definitely the language because mm -hmm. we don't live in an expat area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we live kind of like with the locals. So mm -hmm. the language barrier has been a challenge. Um, the other thing, being here and being on the road is a challenge because y'all, <laughs> These people don't know how to drive out here. Oh, like, oh! Didn't you say you got hit by a car? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so a lot of y'all have heard of Carrier Co. You know. Oh, Carrier Co. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I was down there, you know, walking down the side of the road, and the car just gladly flew on by me. Didn't care that my arm was there. It just. Oh, oh, I know Carrier Cool area. Yeah. The, the streets are so yes. tight and the, 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 the cars are so close together. It's a busy shopping area in Tanzania. Yes. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of downtown LA. Yes. Um, yeah, the yes. markets down there. That's what it reminds me of in Chinatown in New York. Well, but never been. yeah, did he speed by or did yeah. he just tap me? No, 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 no. He didn't tap me. He didn't tap me. <laughs> I was surprised his arm wasn't broken. How fast <laughs> this guy was going. But are you serious? Yeah. It broke his mirror, but So did you have any bruises or mm -mm. what in the I world? I don't know how, but yes. <laughs> all God. All God. So what's the favorite thing? The favorite um what's the favorite thing about Tanzania right now? Oh, I love how lush it is. Like everywhere you go, it's so green. You got trees, fruits, and vegetables growing everywhere. Like y'all know, people say that these people ain't got no food over here. <laughs> but <What? laughs> it's food growing everywhere. Like, everywhere. They they got y'all. All y'all that was sending that money to them people with that little boy with the flies on him. They got oh like, yeah, this you know, <laughs> it's still some people that falls for that narrative and thinks that that video that they consistently used to show us in america with the boy that's starving <laughs> with the flies pitching on him firstly it's flies everywhere here because not because they're poor or dirty is because the vegetation yes. is rich the food is rich everything here yes. in africa is rich and they love hot the heat and right. sweat mm -hmm. You know, they love hot weather, so they just attracted to that. But we've been so misled in oh, America yes. with the type of um, narrative they tried to push. Yes. Like, I feel like they're surprised when they see us here, like other cultures. What do y'all mm. think? Have y'all gotten a question from other e ethnicities that did they ever ask you, like, what are y'all doing here? Um, Not other people outside of the Tanzanians. We had a few Tanzanians ask us like, why y'all here? Like, why would you choose to come why, here? Why aren't you in America still? Yeah. Love, like, they don't understand um, for us that live in America. We understand why a lot of us mm -hmm. are leaving. But um, no, they don't understand why we would choose to come to a country like this. It's not as developed as America. Mm -hmm. But um, I love being in a place where people look like me. Mm -hmm. I love being in a place where I don't have to worry about somebody coming with a gun or something, yeah. you know, because of the color of my skin. I love that. And I love the fact that our people are welcoming to us here. Mm -hmm. And um, this is Do you humbling. feel everybody is welcoming or is just... No. <laughs> so explain. It's everybody like... is not welcoming. <laughs> like you have, look... Y'all know how they say, you know, you got good apples, you got bad apples. Mm -hmm. It's like that anywhere you go. So you got some people here, they don't want you here. They want you to leave and go back. They gonna mm -hmm. try and get they'll over make on it you. Yeah, yes. yeah. You know, they'll make it easy for you. You know, everybody mm -hmm. see or hear your accent. 
and they think that you're the bank Cha -ching! yeah so it's a lot of misunderstandings what do you think everybody has been welcoming to you or no i would say if you put it to a 90 10 ratio 90% mm -hmm. of the people yeah. are happy to see us. 10%, I don't want to literally say that the 10% aren't happy to see us, but I think they're just really confused because they've been brainwashed mm -hmm. as into thinking that America is the greatest place mm -hmm. in the world. Right. Not knowing what they have here is a million times better than what we have going on over there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I would say about it. Yeah, so how have y'all been um, getting uh, used to the culture here? How have you been acclimating yourself into the culture, the African culture? Um, we've definitely been spending a lot of time with the locals mm -hmm. because I, that's the only way you're going to really learn the culture is to be around the locals. And um, just praying for a lot of patience because mm -hmm. when you're coming from, it's not even just different states. You know, mm -hmm. or Canada to the U.S. No, the culture is completely different here, mm -hmm. and so being around the locals and being able to speak to a lot of them, um, it helps because it gives you a better understanding of where we came from. Mm -hmm. And when you remember, this is part of our history as well. It helps you to accept more of the culture. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. So are y'all kids gonna travel to Africa or yes. are they still in America? They're in America. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um but our son he's supposed to be planning a trip here February. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. So we'll see if he we'll actually see. shows up. <laughs> <laughs> you know when we first told him we were uh moving he was like dad I'm loving it here in Vegas. I'm not I'm, I'm not trying to go to Africa. But he watches our channel and he sees stuff and he's like, you know, maybe I might come out there and check it out. So we'll see. Yeah. Did y'all go through any hardships in, actually, where are y'all from in America? I didn't even ask. I am originally from South Florida. I'm originally from South Carolina, but before we came here, uh, we were living in the outskirts of Atlanta, in a city called Marietta. Mm -hmm. um, I know you yeah. from Atlanta, so I'm you I'm from know. Selville, so, so you know. literally right down yeah. the street. Y'all, yeah. before we keep going, let me make sure it's recording correctly because okay. we don't want to go <laughs> <laughs> that's all i kept thinking i don't know why the, the 10 times sped up right <laughs> or yeah the uh the fast one i'd be like oh my god i'd be so annoyed okay so yeah where are y'all from in um america so i'm originally from south carolina mm -hmm. and i'm originally from south florida yeah. okay but we so, came here from uh marietta marietta okay atlanta. Yeah, I'm from Selville, so y'all were about 20 minutes away from where I was. So what pushed you to come to Africa? Did you go through any trauma there or um, issues? Well, I'll say for me personally growing up, I we dealt with a lot of race racist people mm -hmm. um, in the neighborhood I grew up in. Mm -hmm. It started out as a predominantly Caucasian neighborhood. And I remember... Um, being a teenager and not being able to go into mm -hmm. yeah, let's pause it. Let's pause it. Yeah, it how many is. times since you've been here have you gone out to eat and you get there you eat food you're like damn that was bomb and you come back another time and you're like not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> I don't want to eat too hard. Yeah. Yeah, like the cookie. Oh, come on. Have you been to EB25 yet? Uh, EB25. No, what's that? It's a uh, really nice restaurant. They just That's opened up. Restaurant. The only good restaurant that's like really flashy that I've went to is uh Grand Casino over at City Center. And that's some of the casino, food right? is good. Yeah, some of the food is good, but some of it is like, what in the world? Like the eggs. They gave me these light colored eggs. Look like it didn't have any seasoning. I, no, and it I was just it's salt. The local eggs. Yeah. Is the color is a like hell hell. Yeah is no seasoning <laughs> and my daughter she ate it and she spit it out she was like what, what? is this mom she will always tell the truth you? <laughs> right because she she don't even really eat the eggs that mm. i cook and i season it up real nice she's not a, she doesn't like certain textures of oh, food when it's slimy like you. yeah so she she was like ah. 
Like my wife, she don't like ugali. I like ugali. She she loves ugali though, my daughter. Her. My wife said she don't care what she dips it in. She said it separates as soon as it gets in the mouth. So she's like, I'm, yeah, I'm good. I think yeah. you cut off. Let me put out oh, oh, okay. this way better. Yeah. So I mean, do y'all cook most of your food now, or do you eat out? We cook. Okay, okay. Earlier I was asking like, what brought y'all to Africa? What made you say, let's go to Africa? Did you go through any type of like troubles in the States? So, I don't wanna say necessarily it was trouble, but we were just watching the news and it just got to the point where it was like, man, every time we turn on the news, every time you go on social media, there's another black man, another black woman, another black child, being killed senselessly. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, um, for my wife, every time I left the house, she was worried about was I going to come home. Um, in Atlanta at the time, uh, there were black women coming up missing. They were finding them with the organs oh, missing. Yeah, I remember and that. so my wife got to the point where she didn't want to go anywhere. You know, mm. and so we just began to pray and you know ask God, like, God, what do you, what do you want us to do? And He let us know He wanted us to leave America. And so we started looking at different places. We were initially going to go to Belize. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, what uh, made y'all want to go to Belize over Africa? Uh, Africa just, I don't know. Really I just, wasn't on the radar. It wasn't on our radar. We just, I guess, not I guess, because of all the things that they pump about Africa and the West, it just mm -hmm. wasn't in my mind. Yeah, but what 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 is it about Belize? Did y'all just want to go somewhere it was, tropical? It was a black country. Oh, okay. I didn't. I wasn't aware. Yeah, of that. but mm -hmm. it's a black country, and um, I, hour flight. I didn't want to be too far away from my family. So I'm like, it's only a four hour Sorry. flight away. You know, it's a nice tropical country because I I grew up in a tropical yeah. environment. Place, okay, right? and you so, can drive. Yeah. you can drive there from the U.S. Right. Oh, you, wow. Yeah, you can drive through Central America to get there. So if you had to leave there really quickly, you could yeah, go to the wire right. a car real quick. <laughs> get, uh, get up out of there. So what? <laughs> what ultimately made your choice to say, all right, let me go to Africa? So if you remember uh, when the year of return happened for Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, we saw a lot of black people returning back to Ghana because in America that's all we were ever taught was mm -hmm. the door of no return in Ghana and mm -hmm. no one ever talked about Bagamoya mm -hmm. which uh, the Arab slave trade happened there but it was still Africans that was taken Bagamoya yeah Bagamoya here in Tanzania mm -hmm. um, and so and Bagamoya means heartbreak Oh. So a, a lot of so that's people, like Cape. Uh, what is it in Ghana? The castle? Um, I don't know the name. Yeah, I don't remember the name. Yeah, I, yeah. I, but we know what the yeah. uh, slave where the slave trade. We'll insert place. that across the screen now. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. <laughs> um, we started looking, but just our spirit didn't feel like that's where God wanted us to go. Mm -hmm. So uh, we begin to pray and fast and just ask God. Uh, where do you want us to go? And uh, he actually gave my wife a dream. Mm -hmm. um, this is how we found that we were going to Africa, was he gave her a dream. And in the dream, she was in the mountains, and uh, she was looking one way, and she turned around, and out of nowhere, there was a traditionally dressed African, I want to say a king, just because the way he was dressed. Mm -hmm. And he looked her dead in the face, and he told her, build the city and close it up. Mm. And yeah. what made what what about that made you say okay Tanzania? So after that dream, we're like okay, we're going to Africa. So um, we started looking in different places mm -hmm. in Africa. Um, we thought we were gonna go to Nigeria first, yeah. but um, I don't know. One day we were watching videos and Tanzania came across the screen, mm -hmm. and we just I don't know. We started being drawn to Tanzania like a magnet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know why. And we were still stop thinking about it. trying to look at other places and everything. But Tanzania will always come back. It was just like it was drawing us. Yeah. And we knew, okay, this is where we're supposed to go. You know what? I got a sign without even knowing. I had a sign when I named my daughter Kari. And Kari means, uh, well, it's, it's plenty of people speak Swahili in different uh, countries. But for me to choose Tanzania over the West, mm -hmm. 
and she has a Swahili name. I chose a Swahili name for her. Gotcha. Yeah, and it means queenly and brought to bring joy. And she loves it here. So I'm like, was that a sign all along? <laughs> Probably. Probably. So for you, how do you feel like you will um, like Tanzania or you want to move somewhere? For oh. both of y'all, actually. Do you I, I feel love like Tanzania. I love Tanzania. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, uh, Dar es Salaam is an old Arabic word um, that means house of peace. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel very at peace here. I don't uh, have none of the frustrations I had in America. I'm not worried mm -hmm. when I step out the door, am I coming home? Am I gonna have enough money today uh, to take mm -hmm. care of my household? Will I get the same opportunities as a person who's, and be politically correct, skin is a little lighter <laughs> than mine. You know, even though I have the more uh, experience in a certain area and because everyone here looks like me, so I don't get that type of bias here. I'm able to walk freely down the street. Uh, some things that I saw here that also put me at peace, uh, as you, because you have a little one, mm -hmm. you know in the U.S., you would never let your child walk down the street by themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. I could just let her wander, and she just, you know, moves around freely, and it's always some, there's always someone else that's watching, watching her exactly. as well. You know, exactly. like right now, she's left with a Dada, so... You know, she's charging me like $4 for a couple hours, you know, to watch her. So, and you can trust her. You yeah. Know, ain't nothing going to happen to for, her. Yeah, for mothers, families, single mothers. Like, if you want more of a family environment, Tanzania is really good for yes. that um, type of environment. But yes. you said you wanted to live some, somewhere more slow. So, do you see yourself leaving Tanzania or going elsewhere? Um, not Tanzania. I love Tanzania. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful country. But for me, Dar es Salaam is a lot of bit too fast for me. <laughs> I love it. A lot of bit too fast for me. Um, so, I... Even when we were in the States, we wanted to do homesteading. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the slower pace that, you know, we're homesteading. Yes. What does that mean? Like you have your farm and everything. Oh. Being self sustainable, not yeah. depending on yes. uh, the power companies and all of that. Just make, you know, growing your own food, tending to your own animals, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Yeah, so I love Tanzania, but Dar es Salaam is just a little bit too slow for me. And I'm what, fast, fast. Yeah, too fast. <laughs> me, thank you. That was great. But one of the best things I love about Tanzania is the is all the opportunities mm -hmm. that are here. Yeah, yeah. There's more people here to network. I thought mm -hmm. I wanted to live in a slower environment, and since I've traveled around Tanzania and it, uh, went over to Zanzibar mm -hmm. and things like that, I was like, ah. Uh, this is a little too slow pace for me. And then Dar es Salaam started to feel more like home. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, you have to travel, you know, all over and see what works right. for you. I even want to go to other countries. Yes. You of know, course. and see what. We want to see Ethiopia. We want to see Kenya, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. We have some friends that when they first came out here, they started out in Rwanda. And they yeah, that's where nice I went first. Yeah, oh, really? but okay. it was for me. Okay, so what was their age group? Uh, uh, well, they're younger than all three of us. Mid okay. Oh, and they like Rwanda. Well, they're here yeah. now. No, they moved here now. They're here now. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, Rwanda for me was a little too slow. Oh, okay. You know, I need a little more liveliness, but I gotcha. didn't really stay there too long, so I can't really fully judge gotcha. Rwanda, but. For the 48 hours I was there, I was like, <laughs> that's <Okay>. enough. <laughs> wow. That's enough. You know, it was really slow. It gave like, you know, St. Petersburg. So like a retirement area. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. 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 Yeah. It, it, it's more for, you know, someone that's looking to have a more slower paced lifestyle. But it has its pros and its cons. Gotcha. Like the weather. Is more neutral and you know just the safaris things like that but if you're looking for a nightlife you know big shop like that city life mm, they don't the have the city okay. life gotcha. you know gotcha. but everything works for different people That's right. you know it works That's for different true. people so what are the challenges y'all face coming out here I watched 
a video with T3, mm -hmm. and you guys came here with z zero dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> How? Faith. The most I told us to go, so we <laughs> left. <laughs> oh, yeah, now, so. it, it wasn't our plan to come no. here. Yeah. yeah. You know, so let me just make that disclaimer. Right. We our plan was to come here with money. Mm -hmm. We sold all of our furniture. Uh, after we had got our tickets and as we got closer um, and then we were supposed to go on a road trip to go and say our goodbyes to family mm -hmm. and stuff uh -uh. and lo and behold our car was you know a little sick that we were leaving <laughs> so they decided they wanted to act up right so that so money had went... to go oh <laughs> my <laughs> god <laughs> because we had already made plans to go see everybody so mm -hmm. it was like should we just leave from here or you know like as a family member they would have felt like man you're just gonna leave without even coming through and saying bye so yeah we had to use that money to fix the car yeah right? so yeah at that time i think we had about a month and a half still that we had to get around yeah wow so, so it's just a little mismanagement of the funds but you still made it happen how did y'all manage to survive with those circumstances g o <laughs> so when we were in the airport, first of all, I was terrified because, well, as a woman, you want to make sure that you're going to be secure. So I was terrified. I didn't want to come like that. Mm -hmm. But since the most high God told us to, I was like, okay, who am I to, you know, argue with him? But um, he So gave, how do you feel like, I'm sorry, he gave you that sign? Like what, what was a confirming sign to say, okay, let's go? Actually, we were having prayer with one of our friends and her group online, mm -hmm. well, over the phone. And um, this lady, random lady who I had never seen, never spoke to before, never talked to, she started speaking and she was like, Jamila, the most high is telling you to go. He's going to take care of you. Don't mm -hmm. worry about anything. And I'm just like, my mouth just dropped. Because I've never even spoke to her yeah. about it. So I be, do feel like some people can be prophets, you know, and speak to you. You, Because God works through people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what for you was a sign? That right there. The same thing? But for me, like she said, as a woman, mm -hmm. uh, a woman always wants to know, I'm going to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have to worry about nothing. And me being the head of my household, she looks to me to give mm -hmm. her that feeling. Mm -hmm. And at the time, all I could tell her was God said he wants us to go. And, yeah. you know, as a, you're a woman, so you yeah. know if your man is telling you this is the only answer I can give no, you. No, I mean, hard. I have a similar story, yeah, you know. it can be and hard. I feel like my purpose is here, you know, in Africa, so I just follow my heart. Right. And it's something I've never done before because I have many skills doing hair, selling clothes. I have great experience in those things where I can make a comfortable living but it became once I had my daughter it wasn't about having a, 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 a comfortable salary it was about truly being happy and living in my purpose and to take a risk and just run with it and to walk in faith right yeah. yeah and I got a lot of signs as well and we all have our personal relationship with Christ you know in the most high so it's just like you have to know how to uh, read those signs and just step out on faith, yes. you know. And I honestly feel like no matter how much money you save, I mean, no one has done this before us, yes. you no. know. So no <laughs> one will know what challenges you will run into. Right. Everyone shops with their, it within their spends right. within their own mm -hmm. budget, and millionaires go broke too, you yeah. know. And they just don't disclose that information because it's easier for them to right get back on their feet, you know, mm -hmm. with the connections and the network that they have. But here in Africa, it'll spit you out. How did you guys survive? Did people help you guys? Yes. So, so we made it to the airport. So we're sitting in the airport and the plane that had just landed and is pulling up mm -hmm. to the gate. And so I began to pray and I said, God, we're doing as you told us to do. There's the plane. I said, God, I don't have any money. We had zero sitting in the airport. And then I said, but we're trusting you, so we're going to get on this plane mm -hmm. and we're going to go. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you are not a man. You cannot tell a lie. And I know you will not make us 
a fool. Mm-hmm. And I said, and I know that you love my daughter, my, um, my wife, so mm-hmm. she's your daughter. And I know you love me because I'm your son, so you won't let us get all the way over here just to fail. And then our cash app started going off. Wait, what? People just started sending us money. Yes. So you shared it with, you shared your story? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, no, no. Look, no. People that share. knew they we didn't know. People that, we were, people that knew oh. we were leaving. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, yeah. he works in amazing ways because, listen, if you are coming out here to do something good for your mm-hmm. bloodline and for to share your journey with other people, he will provide for you. And I went through a similar yeah. thing, you know, and I feel like in Africa is all about community. You don't have to be rich here because, right. yeah, you know, yeah. people will meet you and God will put you on their hearts and mm-hmm. he will provide yeah yes. you know yeah. he will provide so after that how did you guys uh become more independent so after that um he ain't leave us like that y'all just disclaimer <laughs> yeah if he tell you to do something he gonna provide like yep. he said so once we got over here there was a couple of jobs that we had applied for a long time ago mm-hmm. online and, jobs, yeah. right online jobs that we didn't get but when we got over here we got emails that we got the jobs the mm-hmm. online jobs over here so um we started working online over here and we still had support from people who knew we were coming over here and they still have been faithful in supporting us right. because mm-hmm. they know that it's the most high god that sent us here mm-hmm. so that's how we've been supporting ourselves over here. So mm-hmm. don't be scared, y'all. If he tell you to come, he got a plan. <laughs> Move. Yeah. So and we have our, our YouTube mm-hmm. channel also and uh our subscribers. I'm gonna put it in the link below. Yeah. Our subscribers have been supporting as well. So we wanna give a big shout out to them. Thank you guys for mm-hmm. all that you do. Thank you for sticking with us on this Grateful. journey. Yes. yes. <laughs> and of course our, our, our church family back in Atlanta. You know, I want to give a shout out to Philadelphia mm-hmm. Church of Atlanta. Um, they've been supporting us. Pastor Omar, love you. Um, but they've been there for us. And uh, we've got a, a great circle around us here in mm-hmm. uh, Dar es Salaam also yes. that have been there for us. So, you know, that's what always make sure you have a good team around you. Mm-hmm. You know, the most high will always put the right people around you mm-hmm. to make sure that as long as you're doing what he has called you to do, that it'll be a benefit to you. Right, right. And what I've realized is someone has came along each step of the way to assist me with my journey. Mm-hmm. Has the same happened for you guys? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's been amazing. You know, anytime we've been in need for something, like he'll send somebody. Like or, you haven't yes. starved. Right. No. <laughs> I've been eating good. And y'all here. been here a whole year. <laughs> yes. So how are things now presently? So right now, uh, we've opened up a uh, land development company. Oh, wow. In here. Um, we're going to be building parks, uh, schools, hospitals, different things mm-hmm. here in Tanzania. Uh, and the goal is to branch out with the company all over East Africa. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you have any advice for people who feel discouraged moving here, what would you tell them? Persevere because it's worth it in the end. I'm gonna say this here when you come to Africa and you really see these are our people, this is our family, and you see the needs of the people, persevere because it's worth it in the end. There are challenges, especially when it comes down to a business. There are a lot of challenges, you know, but you can make it through if you persevere, have patience. And remember to trust in God. Have faith, yeah. Yes, because he ain't going to let you down. He mm-hmm. hasn't let us down. And everybody that we know that really has been trusting him, he has not let us down. So mm-hmm. do it. Persevere. You'll make it through. And for me, I would say uh, there's so many opportunities here. Mm-hmm. Something you might be doing in the States right now as an employee. Mm-hmm. But you've got the experience because your manager or your supervisor is always coming to you for answers that you could actually run the company. Exactly. You can come here and start that same company mm-hmm. and run it here because we actually have the opportunity to own our own company. here in land. Yeah. 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 And I, I, a friend of mine was saying how, you know, the agents come here and they will come here broke. And end up 
owning businesses and things like that, you know, because they have support from their tribe yes. back home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you feel? Um, do you feel like they have more advantages here in Africa? I mean, you just said that, but what are the advantages? Because I feel personally like there's a lot of gaps that can be filled. So I'll say this. You can line up 10 different, you know, jobs, businesses that you want to open. Mm -hmm. You can roll a dice and whichever one it lands on is needed here. Mm -hmm. So is the opportunities are there and the people are here for those opportunities. And guess what? They want people here to actually build. Yeah, and and, and, and give jobs out yes. to the locals, you know. Because our people are suffering over here. Y'all, they, for the they really need jobs. So, so for women, what opportunities do you feel is hair in business? Well, since, you know, I know you do hair. Yeah. So, natural hair, I'm natural, y'all. Oh, yeah. I'm natural, too. <laughs> <laughs> They really need people to number well two things to open up salons that actually know what they're doing mm -hmm. um, with natural hair. Now braiding hair, they on it, but yeah, hair, braiding hair, we don't need any more braiders here yeah. unless you know you have a technique right that is really neat because I realize they kind of lack technique here where they use the gel cream to like part really neat and really make it look shiny and precise so yeah i feel like that's necessary but locks they don't have they don't many have locks here and natural hair here. natural hair uh hair, specialists yeah. what else do you think um for women like they have clothes here but it's not put on the forefront like that. Like you're gonna see women that are making clothes on the, mm -hmm. the side of the roads and everything. Yeah. But they don't really have a lot of designers that are putting their things out there mm -hmm. like that. Clothes for us. You're gonna see stuff for what I consider older women mm -hmm. in the store. Yeah. But or the young the young younger styles are not promoted correctly, right. marketed correctly, like it's hiding. Yes. Yeah, no, I feel like a lot of businesses don't market very well. So even promotion, learning, t marketing classes. Yes. If someone knows classes. how to market, they can come out here and help people market. Yes. So for guys, what do you think is are some business opportunities out here? Fellas, 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 listen. Y'all can come out here and do anything. If you are a fitness guru, you can open you up a, a gym. Mm -hmm. uh, you can open up a bowling alley. You can open up a look. Y'all know in America we black people we like a roller skate. So you can open up a skate rink. Uh, look, you can open up a little jump park with little trampolines and everything in it. Um, let me tell y'all something. They don't really have the type of stores like what we're used to. You know, uh, I don't know where you are from, but if you know what a Kroger's is or a Publix. Uh, you know, from South Carolina, so a food line, Piggly Wiggly. Yes, Piggly <laughs> Wiggly exists. You know, these different stores, there's not even a store over here comparable to a Walmart. So you could open up those things mm -hmm. here. The only thing I've seen is the game. Yeah, you know, that's a little similar, but it's still not as big right. as Walmart. And they're going out of business. Yeah, the game's going out of business. They're going out of business. Yeah. Come on over. <laughs> oh, ladies, one big thing. If you have a vision for a beauty supply store, please come on. Oh over. yes, they definitely need beauty supply. We really store. need. The only one I've seen is in Mill and Monty's Mall, and it, yeah, you know, yeah. we don't call, we don't consider that a be. You know, look, we from the hood. Exactly. Y'all right, know what the beauty <laughs> supply store looks like. Right. The the real nice products, like the, the, the numerous products that yes. we're used to, right. and it's just not enough. It's it's not enough. But literally, you could do anything. Literally, yeah. anything you could do here. Yeah. So, do you guys have any regrets as far as your move, your journey? No. no. I don't have any regrets mm -hmm. at all with this move. Um, like we said, it's been ups and downs. Um, that ups and downs in the U.S. Right. So. Right. Do you feel like it would have been better? Do you feel as if it's more beneficial? <laughs> How can I say this? Do you feel like you would rather be broke here or in America? And how would the situations differ? Well, we were broke, broke here in America. In America. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all been broke in America? Right. <laughs> so what's the experience? How do the experiences differ being broke here and in America? So, it's, okay. you go ahead. 
I say for me, it's not as stressful because being broke there, yeah, you may lack some things, but you're not always <laughs> you're not always being discriminated against. Yeah, looked at a certain way. You're not always thinking that. Well, dang, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I climb up the ladder yeah, the like way that I, de right. you know, I desire to? So, uh, so for here is less stress, and the broke is very different. Like <laughs> I broke here. For them, we live in rich, but this I broke here. <laughs> right. And I say for me, the difference I would rather be broke here is because let me tell you something about. It. Outside of driving, because Tanzanians turn into a completely different person when they get behind the wheel. <laughs> but when they're not behind the wheel of a vehicle, they are some of the most loving people. And mm -hmm. like literally, like where me and my wife stay, we, we stay in the more local rural area. Mm -hmm. uh, because we, like I said earlier, we want to engulf ourselves with the people here. Um, you, I can go to any of my neighbor's house and just say I'm hungry. And they'll feed, and they'll feed. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know. In America, it's more of an indiv individualized, right. individual lifestyle. Like, you Get look out for yourself. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, people can't even afford to support mm -hmm. you in America. Because America, right. wow. everybody's, you know, under stress. And honestly, people are in more in a position to help you here than in Africa. I know, in this third world broke, country, right? right, because things are way cheaper here. So being broke in America, you're forced to go on food right. stamps, right. Uh, government assistance in any type of way. And even that won't hold you up. Because then you'll be depressed on top yes. of it yes. because of the environment. Like, yeah. But I was going to say, like, where we live right now, the average local where we live, mm -hmm. they're living off the equivalent of 50 USD yeah. a month. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. And so. it's funny, they pay up to 12 months here for rent ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody in America that can pay... None of my friends. 12 months. None, None of my friends. friends. Based on how much... And I don't care about the currency exchange because they're making tens of need, t, 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 t shillings. Right. Yeah. And they still can't afford 12 months of rent. Mm -hmm. We don't have that type of stability in America. Most people. Well, you know what I tell know? people? I tell people like this. Well, all y'all... They're sitting over there talking about Africans is poor. It's poor. No, they're not. Y'all seen our videos. Y'all seen her videos. Y'all see the houses out here. These are big six, seven bedroom houses. These people, they own them. There's no mortgages out exactly. here. Exactly. You see them with a car. I've seen BMWs, Mercedes, Hummers out here. These people own these cars. Yeah. And these iPhones that all y'all paying $39.99 or whatever it is a month for, they own these phones outright. So right. you tell me who's broke. They, we making payments in the U.S. on stuff, <laughs> and they just do whatever they want with it because they own it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, you, what do you think about the situation? Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, with, with what he was saying, like in America, it's rare that we actually own anything. <laughs> it's very rare. Like even your house, you're gonna be old before you actually own it. Exactly. <laughs> they can still <laughs> take it away from right. you. Right. Right. Foreclosure. You know, you could still be. You know, just underhanded. Yes, Very. there in America. You know, so I, I definitely see the advantages here for the future generations over yes. living in America. I feel like America is dying. You know, and I don't want to make the folk you trash America because it's had its benefits. Do you feel like it's giving you benefits living in America? Yes, to I, come here I and do. be prepared. I do because all the things we were privy to education mm -hmm. in America um, and like my husband was saying earlier most of us have had jobs before and just about any skill or trade that mm -hmm. we were able to acquire there we're able to come here and teach mm -hmm. others how to actually um, perform those jobs uh, properly and, um, and yes and we can open businesses with the things that we have gone to school for. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a benefit. And also, America, you got to have thick skin. Yeah. And so when you come here to Africa, you know, that thick skin helps prepare you for dealing with people. Of government. all types of people. Yeah, the government. Here. <laughs> so, yes, you know, that, that thick skin helps yeah. a lot. So I definitely see the benefit of being in America because it prepared us to be able to build here in our own mm -hmm. country. Yeah. So I think every skill that we got 
in America, even though America was rough, it was preparing us for here. Um, mm -hmm. Every job I've ever had, every interaction with people who don't like me, people who like me, um, things that we've seen, uh, things that we've been exposed to, prepared me for coming here mm -hmm. either to show me how to deal with people or how not mm -hmm. to deal with people. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and it was And what has benefit. Africa taught y'all? Africa has taught me to be more relaxed. You don't have to always be... <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we know where black people time started. <laughs> it's right, right exactly. Has, um, exactly. DPC has nothing on Pole Pole. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hakuna Matata. <laughs> so, yes, but it, it teaches you to, to take a breath. Like, you don't have to Relax. be in a rush all the, the time. time right? Take some time to just enjoy life. You know, that's the biggest thing that I think I have gotten from here is just enjoy. Enjoy God's creation. Enjoy being you. Yeah. You know, you don't get that over there. For me, I'll I'm say the, the biggest thing I've learned here is to feel comfortable around my own people. Um, because as we know, in the U.S., we were taught to don't normally, trust each yeah, other. Yeah, don't trust each other, uh, backbite, gossip about each other, you know, the old Willie Lynch stuff, you know, mm -hmm. light skinned brother versus dark skinned brother, man versus woman, old man versus young man, old woman versus young woman. You know, and so I've learned that here, look, we all just trying to live. Mm -hmm. You know, we all trying to survive. But here, the mindset is to work together instead of yeah. against each other. Yeah. You know, in the U.S., we were taught to work against each other. And we were to come together, like I see the way that they come together here. Look. Yeah, and that's what I hope for, for, for the people who are awakened to come here and see the benefits of being here and working together, right. you know, and changing that mindset. So what has your experiences been as far as sisterhood and brotherhood in Africa? Um, I'll say, I don't know. I don't, I don't hang like that. I'll put it mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I'm a I, I may not look as old as I am, but <laughs> they have a 25 year old. Okay? I've had my day. <laughs> so, but we we have um, met and we have some really good friends over here that the Most High has blessed us to have, and you know we're very thankful for. It. I have you know mm -hmm. good sisters that I can talk to, that I can pray with, they give me advice. You know, mm -hmm. we do things together. So sisterhood is good, but you just have to make sure you know who you're around. Mm -hmm. I'll say that because even though you come to another continent, it snakes wherever you go. Yeah, so. it is. But do you feel like it, it how, how does it differ from the states? Um, I think it differs because I think when we come over here versus the states, our mindset changes. You know, mm -hmm. we're looking for sisterhood. We're yeah. more open to, to it. receptive to yes. it. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. what about you as far as brotherhood? So, it's been a long time since I had some brothers that I could really stand with. And when I say stand with, I mean like I can depend on them. I could be vulnerable with them and yes men we can be vulnerable with each other America has taught us that as men oh you can't tell your brother hey I'm going through something but uh, before I left you know God gave me some some wonderful brothers and then when I got here he introduced me to some other brothers and so I've been blessed to have brothers around me here in Tanzania also back in America that I can just call at any time, pick up the phone, mm -hmm. and just be like, hey, man to man, I need somebody to talk to, I'm, I'm going through this, and instead of, oh man, da da da, do this, or telling me to do the wrong thing, they'll be like, hey man, let me pray Actually with you. Actually giving you, you good, yeah, giving advice. Me good advice, yeah. you know? So, here, we actually can be brothers, be real brothers and sisters, to each other mm -hmm. and uh, treat each other with the respect that we deserve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good apples and bad apples everywhere, but everywhere. I definitely feel more unity here. Yeah. Like I, I, every time I'm riding around and I see all my people, I'm like, 
this is how white people feel in America. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is the benefit, you know. And speaking of white people, there is so many people, Europeans, Asians here, that I did not know they were here <laughs> to the magnitude yeah. that they are. Oh my God, it's so many of them. It what is. do you guys, have you gotten the questions that I've gotten? Like, what are you doing here? Um, not from them. They mm -hmm. like I, I'll say they don't speak to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's probably because how we be looking at exactly. them. Exactly. <laughs> we looking at them like, what are you doing? Do you what get you funny doing? looks from them? Um, we do. We do get funny looks from some of the other nationalities. And what's the vibe you get behind those looks? Well, you know, well, first of all, it's a race for this place. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a race for Africa. Right? And yeah. So when they see us coming here. They know why. Mm -hmm. yeah. and they can tell the difference between us and the local. Exactly. And so, you know, they, you can tell that they don't like it. They don't want us to be here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they want to have it for they, themselves. Right. They want it. And look, y'all, they've been in these countries and stuff for way years. before us telling us that it was little naked people running around yeah, and uh -huh. everything but they over here vacationing in paradise right exactly <laughs> <laughs> and telling the locals something completely different right. about yeah, us back yeah. home yeah. they don't like you you right. know they think you're african booty sparters right. and all this when it's just the jews that's putting that in the movies and trying to bridge you know build a gap between us right. mm -hmm. so what would you what would your advice be as far as what do you see as far as us bridging the gap between African Americans and Africans? How can we do that? Um, I think it's good to, when you come over here, to talk to a lot of the, the local people. And mm -hmm. believe it or not, just as much as we come and we see things that we want to do, like I said, they want it done. So get together and see how you can accomplish those things. Um, the company that we open, we opened it and we're working with the locals because it's locals here who desire the country to be built in a certain way as well. So we're working together with them coming up with different projects, different things that we can put in the communities to beautify the community, to give people the um, things that they need to have peace of mind. Um, so I say come and talk to the locals and Somehow, some way, you're gonna find yourself in the midst of the government yeah. where you can talk. Because we've been able to talk to several government officials. Mm -hmm. right. um, so I say, come here with an open mind. Don't come here feeling like, oh, I'm just here to hang out with the diaspora. Yeah. If you want to do that, just stay in America. Don't think it's gonna be kumbaya, welcome, no. holding hands. It's not gonna be no. any of that. Yeah, you do right. get a le different level of brotherhood and sisterhood. But people, I wanted to ask you guys, what have been what have been your experience with the visa situation, immigration? Because a lot of people have difficulties. Um, we actually didn't have difficulties with the immigration. We were expecting to because we had heard the horror stories, but we didn't have um, difficulties. I could say this, what we did, because we did get attitudes. <laughs> They don't play with you guys. <laughs> they don't play with y'all. But what we did was, even though they had the attitudes, you know how they say, kill them with kindness? That's yeah. literally what we did. And once we did that, it's like they attitudes went from giving you nasty, dirty looks to smiles and everything, moving you on up. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that was our experience with the immigration. So I just think you just have to come in with the right attitude the right mm -hmm. vibe and everything and it'll change your atmosphere mm -hmm. don't allow them to dictate how things are gonna go you you kill them with kindness and i think it'll be good because we didn't have issues that's yeah. what we did yes. i mean what what have been the difficulties you faced here with immigration no not with immigration she already told me that situation so let's see so, okay, some things we ran into, and so, like we mentioned earlier, we have a land development company. Mm -hmm. um, here in Dar es Salaam, we're working on building three free parks for mm -hmm. the locals, because most of the parks here, you gotta pay to use. All the parks here. Yeah, pretty much all <laughs> the parks. And the 
the really big issue we've been running into is just the slowfulness of the central government with uh, getting us our permits mm -hmm. to break ground and to get on these parks. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of hurry up and wait, you know. Yeah. And it can get aggravating, you know. You Hurry up and wait. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they want you to come down there for a meeting. You show up. They're two hours late. And then so the run around. The run around, pretty much. And then you get there, and they're like, "Oh, well, we don't, we didn't, we don't have this ready. Uh, come back another time." And so you end up spending a lot of money just going oh, back and forth. Oh, so they trying there. to just milk the money. Yeah. So, so that's really yeah. the only issue we have personally faced. Um, but outside of that, we've just been pretty much killing them with kindness. And even though a lot of times I want to blow up and, you know, <laughs> and, go, and go there, you know, but my wife, she's really good at restraining me. So I'll calm down. <laughs> and it could be a lot harder in the States is. to even get any type of right. permit. Right. And I'd you know. say for also for here, another struggle is there's so many levels of the government here oh that you have to go through and you have to start at the very bottom and there's so many steps like we started our process almost a year ago now and we just got to the top <laughs> so <laughs> it's levels so many levels and so it's, it's, it's like you said it's a little frustrating um with that it's a lot frustrating. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just want to straight give up. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you have to keep going. But that's been our biggest struggle is honestly working with the local the government. That's been the biggest struggle for So us you here. guys been able to retain So how were y'all able to attain residency out here? So we got our residency through uh NGO that we're a part of for volunteers. Um, and it's called Tanzanian Flying Doctors and they actually go out to the local villages and provide health care to the ones that can't make it to the city, to the hospitals and everything. So we actually got our residency through volunteering with that NGO out here. And the process only took, it didn't take that long. I say it took about three months, but it's because sometimes they system here, be up and down, up and down. How much did it cost? Um, it cost around 1200 yeah. USD. Mm -hmm. to get it versus if you get residency just with your business it's a little over three thousand dollars wow yeah. yeah okay well that about wraps it up for our show today i want them to give away how can they reach out to you guys so if you guys want to reach us we also have a youtube channel which she says you know put in the description box yes called stepping stones to home um, you can also reach us at steppingstonesthehome at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram at steppingstonesthehome. And hey, we're here. Whatever y'all need, let us know. Yes. We hope right. we'll see y'all in Africa soon. soon. All right, you guys. <laughs> uh, you just got to make that trip out here. Take the risk. Step out on faith. Don't wait to save too much money because no matter how much money you have, it's not enough. Until you get out here and see what it really requires from you to live in Africa and thrive. thrive. Yes. Yes. No matter where you are, as far as you uh, your finances, all that matters in Africa is connections, the connections you make. So you don't have to come here with a certain dollar amount. Just take the risk, step out on faith. So that about wraps it up for this show, you guys. One love. <laughs>